when we said about next for autonomy, he concerned with the performance of the entire economy. Uh, the way to to uh, access for the economy, they have very different way. We have very detailed and uh, way that the economists enjoy to do something like that. But uh, currently, we just do certain aggregate way. Yeah. Um, Usually we uh, assess the economy in terms of production, like uh, uh, how much uh, we can produce each year and what is the value of the all of the uh, production in terms of monetary terms. Then usually uh, uh, econom economists, uh, when they try to forecast uh, the situation, uh, economic situation in the future, uh, we need to aggregate into volume and price. I will talk this point later more. But you can uh, see also for uh, how the money go, the distribution and the distribution of the money uh, to the basic uh, uh, sector or basic uh, uh, social class or it depends on what you would like to analyze. And finally, you would like to see the consumption uh, to the household consumption or common consumption and the wealth of nation. This is the way that the macro is still with. And if you see the picture, uh, when we said about road, we did cut in two points. The first we call it stock, the second we call it flow. Uh, if you see the stock in the year T is less than stock in the year T plus one, this means that economic growth and the, the red card is the, the thing that uh, is increased. And uh, every year we would like to see it increase every year. In Thailand, uh, just only for your example, similar to population, we can get this information from some authority or research. Institute. For example, uh, we have the National Economic and Social Development Board that they have to prepare very one of the very sophisticated and very heavy one try to collect the information from every sector in the country, establish the what we call it the system national account uh, of the time called national income. And that they have integrated into different sector. Uh, that do the same standard all, all over the world. Okay. And uh, also the Bank of Nations, like uh, the Bank of Thailand, also provide many economic and financial indicators that we can use. Uh, in the commerce, uh, they have to provide the uh, uh, official price index. They will touch it quite further, but it's here. In the finance, also, uh, they have to provide, they know the revenue of the government, they know the expenditure, they know the budgeting and uh, spending of the government. And also, usually, Minas Finance is then control for the short-term economic projection, like uh, next year, next two years, next three years. But don't ask them more than that, they cannot answer you. Because their model is just dealing with the, the short-term one. So for the long-term one, maybe we need the research still to do this. Uh, for example, Thailand, uh, uh, Thai, uh, Thailand Development Research Institute VI is like uh, the, the non-profit one. They can provide us uh, the short-term and long-term economic projection and also other research. Then uh, we, we go a little bit for detail of the cost domestic product. This is an aggregate indicator for the macroeconomic uh, uh, activity. As I mentioned to you first, that uh, to project the GDP, we, yeah, we can project it by the total GDP, uh, the whole, the whole, whole amount of money, but it's quite good and maybe too, uh, easy to, uh, to uh, manipulate and we cannot see why shape like that. So usually, uh, at least we have to break it into uh, volume effect and price effect. 
we do this because the value chain in the future and price chain is not the same. Uh, price chain may be three percent, volume chain may be two percent, five percent, or something like that. So yes, it it is separated. We can predict it more precise. Okay. If you like to project it, okay. But usually I recommend you try to buy somebody who can do it. Otherwise, you have the a little bit confused, similar to this. Yeah, but if you like to, to do it, no problem. I have another one, uh, one month course for you. <laughs> Next, please. Free. Uh, free, but uh, by, sponsored by IRO. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a uh, like to show you for the uh, PDI uh, uh, forecast for the long term 20 years. Yeah. To forecast for 20 years, uh, usually we have to, we cannot rely on the, the past. Yeah. For the short term, usually we, we think that uh, we can do trend analysis because the short term, everything changes a little bit. Yeah. But for the long term, 10 years, 20 years, uh, usually we need uh, uh, some more sophisticated uh, analysis. And usually they are set up in like a scenario, yeah. at least they don't want to be wrong. That's why they just project uh, high, low, and medium. So any, anyway, it would be allowed this, something like that. So in this, in this projection, uh, Dr. Song Chai of EDI, he forecasted in three scenario. The first one is like a because that the green one, the green one is the high GDP growth. He, uh, he mentioned it as the the GDP that enough for escape from middle income trap for Thailand. Yeah. Uh, the second one, the blue one, is like the our potential. Yeah. And the third one uh, is the the weak decision. It means that maybe if it do something wrong. Maybe the growth just only two percent. If we do it accurately, maybe the growth is around seven, something like this. Uh, we then we use the in our calculation. We usually we use the the potential growth for safe. Yeah. So, but if you don't believe him, you would like to do it by yourself. This is the way you can do. First, uh, if you check uh, into your own statistics in your country, at least they have to show you the GDP at uh, constant price and also the GDP at the uh, uh, market price or current price is the same thing. So, uh, when you uh, multiply GDP at constant price, uh, with the GDP deflator, you can get the GDP at current price. Uh, we can say that, okay, for GDP at current price, the, the money that we spend now, if we break it into two parts, for GDP at constant price, the volume chain, and the GDP deflator is high chain. We see differently that by the in, in every uh, national income or SMT system, national account, they have to show both uh, content price and, and uh, uh, current price, and then you can calculate the uh, uh, deflator from that. Why we need to, to see deflator, I will show you later. Okay. So we need to do to calculate it. Uh, for the GDP at constant price, uh, we have to use the very simple formula like this. We call it the productivity multiplied by employment. Productivity in this definition is very crude. It's just like a average uh, income of uh, employee. I mean that uh, every, everybody who can employ just leave from, from the uh, system national account 
it's like a average of your uh, of the people in the country per person and multiply by total person who are employed then you can get the GDP so this is quite important uh, formula you have to remember it because it, we just use this GDP is equal to productivity multiplied by employment so but actually uh, we, we we will start for GDP because we know GDP, right? We know GDP. We, we know number of employment from labor force. Then we can calculate for employment. Okay? It's just really the formula that you reverse. Then. Uh, we will go to the next step. <laughs> you have to know that by using this formula, they have some pitfall. Yeah? Uh, even we calculate from uh, start from GDP. You will start from here and then you assume for productivity and you handle the employment. Yeah? Finally, you will get the unemployment because we know the total of economic active population and we calculate employment and then finally we get unemployment. The problem is that sometimes you uh, have very good dream, you estimate productivity is quite high and then finally you will see that your uh, employment is more than your population in the future. So you have to check by use this way. If you start from uh, fit GDP and let the uh, uh, unemployment or unemployment as an uh, independent variable, they have possibility that maybe you calculate a number of employment more than economic activity, uh, active, active activity population or even population itself. So just check that you don't estimate too much. Maybe JC would like to say something more. Should be the other way around? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we can do another way around. Yeah, it should be reverse. Sorry. Maybe I sleep three more. <laughs> but they have an, another way that uh, you can do. Like uh, you, you can start from unemployment and uh, uh, as a dependent variable, and uh, then you assume uh, for uh, productivity that then you maybe and uh, you know employment now, and you let the GDP shade. And this is usually if you don't want to associate with the and, and the chart that I mentioned before, uh, we use this way, but the GDP will shade. And then you see we are happy with the GDP sometimes. It's too high or too low, I don't know. Usually it's too low. <laughs> yeah. So this is the way to play with the, 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 the simple formula like this. The next one is the, the last formula. Uh, we call it consumer price. Usually uh, when it gets growth, uh, you call, uh, it's unreasonable to prevent the uh, uh, Price inflation, and uh, by theory it can uh, it can be changed different because when you said about the GDP deflator, it's the price price chain of or of the activity in the economy. Maybe the price chain for specific thing like a certain food, like a for this that is we mentioned on the consumer price, but uh, the thing that people consume, maybe the price chain is not the same as the uh, other sector consume or something like that. So, uh, in the real situation, they are a little bit, a little bit different. But in the, this model, and usually for forecast, uh, we can assume that uh, the Consumer price index is equal to GDP deflator.
you can assume other way but uh, if you think uh, if you assume other way you have to understand that if you if you project for too long then you will uh, you will have some uh, conflict between between uh, your GDP and uh, your income in the future so for the long term projection usually we, we assume it uh, come close together until the same Okay, so at least we have to follow what the lab uh, uh, show you that this is quite a simple way that we, we can uh, do the economic uh, projection. So, uh, if you see in the lab model, we have the eco worksheet that we did start from the GDP as constant price. Actually, they try to ask you to break down to the sector. If you have that, that information, it's okay. But if you don't have, maybe just only uh, by GDP, by uh, aggregates for the whole country is enough for, for our calculation for social protection law. Then uh, you know the GDP growth rate. This is volume chain, right? And then you will get the new uh, GDP at constant for the next year. Mm -hmm. Again, you also need to know or assume the GDP indicator. That's the price chain of the GDP. How can we get this? Usually we just estimate from, from the trend uh, and also maybe you need some, some imagination on <laughs> how far your country can uh, improve productivity or something like that. Yeah. And then you can see the GDP uh, growth rate after you use trend analysis or something like that. And together between the GDP at constant rate multiply with the deflator, you will get the GDP at current price for the next year. We need this to compare for fiscal space, fiscal impact, or many really things that you have to compare. That uh, now, I know that you will calculate a lot for the previous year, uh, last, uh, uh, yesterday and this morning to find how much money you need and you need to co uh, compare it with the GDP or with the government spending or government revenue that you will touch more to show that okay how much money you need uh, whether it's uh, too much uh, to the country something like that yes. and also uh, by this way uh, you can get the uh, if you see the formula on the on the right side uh, when we have a, a GDP at constant price multiplied by employee then you can get the uh, uh, labor productivity and then the labor productivity growth rate finally you can get the employee when you get employee finally, with the economic active population you can calculate root the formula that I, I show you to get unemployed it's a flow and uh, maybe uh, a little bit confused but uh, I try to show you that I have at least four formula here if you follow that formula you can understand it and this is in the lab in the, the introduction but uh, it's difficult to read if you don't know uh, what does it mean? But uh, I think I try to separate it to the, the, the four formula. You can follow this. So, now it's time for exercise again. Okay, very simple one. If you can go like this, you understand what I talk. 
So we know the TDPS consent price. Let's assume that it's a 5,000 currency unit, right? We know the TDPS currency price is 6,000 uh, at the ESG. So what we need to do is TDP displacer. Yeah, so usually, uh, as if you remember the first or second from line, I'm not sure. Uh, you can get this GDP as per NPI equal to GDP constant price multiplied by the defacer. So, if you like to get the defacer, how can you do? Just leave, move. Yeah, move. Right? Uh, yeah. Then you can get. Yeah. Uh, how much is it? Uh, one point. Okay. Yeah. One point. Yes. So it means that it's five percent more. That if you have a GDP at a constant price, you multiply by five percent around that, then you can get the GDP uh, at the rate price. So for six six thousand divided by five thousand. Yeah, one point two. Yes, should be one point two. And then uh, we will use this for for cash. Now you know everything that you need. Uh, you can get the GDP growth because you know the theory of GDP chain before for the constant price. You, you know that uh, GDP growth for the GDP uh, constant price may be ten percent. Okay. So if you assume that if you grow at the same rate, then you can get the new GDP constant, right? Okay. So, if you say that if it grows at the same rate, ten percent. Yeah. So, what is your next GDP constant, right? Yes, like a, you use this multiply by 1.2, uh, uh, 1 plus 1.2. If you, it's so like in percentage, it's 1, uh, 1 times 20 percent. Right? In percentage, like that. Or you can say it's uh, 1 plus. Uh, one plus, uh, uh, yeah. So you can get something like this. In formula in Excel, it's very really easy. Okay, then if you also think that the price chain is the same, okay, you can say that okay, GDP differentiator depends on you. But if you said, okay, GDP defender is the same as the previous year, yeah, then you assume that it's uh, 1.22, yeah? And then, by this way, you can get the, the new GDP at current price. Here you come. Protection of the GDP. Easy? Yes. <laughs> but in the examination, it's not easy like this. <laughs> okay. All of the blue sheets on the icon, although they have a lot of things, the core concept is here. Okay. But you remember that history is very crude. It needs a lot of your thinking. Like you have to think that how, how much for the GDP growth of your country in the future, right? in the context, right? And uh, what is the debater uh, in the net? And then uh, you also have to know the 
the uh, how much money uh, uh, per each uh, uh, employee that we call the productivity okay? to, to get the in detail of uh, employment and then we can get the unemployment okay. it's step by step like this by this formula okay. so we have any question for this very simple formula Now, you can apply for staff at this uh, faculty. <laughs> now you are back home from this. <laughs> you can apply position here. Okay. Yeah, but usually this is the way that uh, we do for, for a modeling for the long term. Like, uh, if you see in the uh, IRO model, for pension or for hotel or for other social security, uh, usually we, we just do around this. And maybe you can ask uh, whether it's uh, accurate enough. Is it based on your assumption? Yeah. If you assume by yourself quite close to the field of things, then you can get the, the, the same. Yeah. If you see the history and uh, and you follow the history, maybe the you are you are five year or not for anything yet, but not quite different. Yeah. Uh, if there there is no any shock, if they have any shock, maybe maybe something that is different. Yeah. So we do this because. Uh, it depends on your your final calculation that you need to to compare your your benefit, right? You know the, how much money you need, but uh, we need to assess this uh, your your benefit with the uh, productivity of your country and also the uh, how much money you need for for the government. Uh, so we, we answer that point uh, later when uh, I explain more for the government revenue uh, and uh, expenditure, then you can see the fiscal impact. And that time, we answer that. And uh, after that, you, they can see and understand uh, why we need that big economy. Okay? So I will touch this point again at that time.